Welcome back, MTG Joe here with another Zendikar Rising deck tech. Uh, the new standard format is going to be here next week. Uh, Zendikar Rising is bringing a bunch of new cards to the format uh, and a bunch of cards are rotating out. Um, so I am playing the early streamer event on Wednesday the 16th. Um, so this is a best of one format uh, where you go up against other content creators. So a bunch of these decks will be playing during that day. Uh, so this is best of one. Uh, if you do have any suggestions for this deck or any other decks you'd like to see, do leave me a note in the YouTube comments. Otherwise, hope to see you on that day. Um, these aren't intended to be necessarily tier one off the shot, but they're kind of starting points to give ideas and thoughts into the decks that we're playing. Uh, so we've done a number of deck techs so far. I have a bunch on my Aetherhub page as well that we'll get to. But we're going to start things off with uh, Orzhov Clerics. Uh, so it's a new uh, tribe that's being supported with some cards from the older set that happen to be clerics as well. So jumping into it, we have a couple new legendary clerics that work well with the theme here. Uh, you have Tabarax, Hope's Demise. This is a three mana 2-2 two -two flyer. Uh, it has lifelink as long as it has five or more 1-1 one -one counters on it. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Tabarax. If that creature was a cleric, you draw a card and you lose a life. So pretty much all the creatures in our deck are clerics, so this kind of fuels this way here. When things are dying, it gets bigger, it eventually gets lifelink, and you kind of go from there. Uh, the creature's dying element works really well with uh, another legendary that we have, Aura, Skyclave, Hierophant. They're really making these names uh, f good for us content creators. Uh, this is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three lifelinker. Uh, whenever it or another cleric dies, return target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost. From your graveyard to the battlefield so you can have stuff die comes back if you'll uh, tabarax and you kind of go with like mini loops in that case there uh, you have clerics of life's bond this is a two mana two two um, basically soul warden style effect whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under your control you gain a life and then whenever you gain a life for the first time each turn you put a one one counter on the cleric um, this cleric in particular so you can kind of see like a plus one one theme as well in the deck here uh, speaking of plus one ones, we have Luminarch Aspirant. This is a two mana one one, where at the beginning of your combat each turn you get to put a one one counter on target creature you control. Um, so this is another ways that you can throw stuff onto Tabarax or some of your other creatures as well. Um, continuing on, we have some cards from older standard sets that all happen to be clerics. Um, you've noticed some of a life game theme with a lot of the clerics as well. So we have Speaker of the Heavens, one mana one one Vigilance Lifelink, and if you have twenty seven or more life, you can tap the speaker to create a 4-4 angel. Uh, this is something good as well if you put the 1-1 counters on it um, to just make a big vigilant life linker. Uh, you have Archfiend's Vessel, 1-mana uh, 1-1 one -one life linker. Uh, if you get it back from your graveyard with uh, Aura, you do get a 5-5 demon instead. So it's kind of a reanimation theme to it as well. Uh, finally, we have Luminous Broodmoth. So it was, although not a cleric, the only non-cleric in the deck, with things dying, we can get it back to the graveyard from the graveyard, and you kind of get free value that way there. We're kind of okay with our things dying. They come back. In the case of Archfiend's Vessel, you actually it comes back as a 5-5, five five, which is pretty sweet. And then you have Veto, Thorn of the Desk Rose. Whenever we're gaining life, your opponent loses that much life. can also give all our things lifelink. So it kind of plays with this whole life gain sub-theme. Now, in terms of removal and effects like spells... We have Dire Tactics. We have a number of humans in the deck. I think there's 12 total. Um, so this becomes a two mana exile effect. Really good for Uro or some of the bigger creatures. Um, Agadim's Awakening is one of the uh, bolt lands, if you want to call them that, the mythic land cycle. So it's either a spell or a black source that you pay three mana to come into play untapped. Um, but basically this is a mass reanimation effect for uh, three and X where you get to return any number of target creatures with different CMC from your graveyard. So really good in the late game to get back all their clerics. Um, you could kind of potentially combo off depending on how much life your opponent's at because you have Veto and Cleric of Life Bound. So you have multiple Clerics of Life Bounds come into play at the same time. With Veto, they had all see each other. Actually, you can only have one Cleric, but if you have Cleric of Life Bound and a bunch of other creatures come in with Veto, you can drain your opponent of that life. Um, so then we have Eliminates as some early removal, and then I'm trying out three Village Rites. It's a way to sack our creatures to trigger the death triggers, uh, and to just draw cards in the deck. Um, once we kind of have an idea of what the, 
the meta is like in terms of creatures, we can better uh, tweak our removal package, uh, whether it be cutting some village rights, but right now we have five, we can go up to eight removal spells as well uh, in these colors. And then finally the mana base, uh, two black castles, two white castles, create some tokens, draw some cards, we're gaining life so we can fuel that into Castle Lockwain. Um, as I've done with the other decks, I prefer the Trinomes over the Temples um, because of the basic land types. Um, as well as drawing cards is better than, cycle, uh, than scrying in my opinion. Um, so this allows both your castles to come into play untapped. Uh, we also have the Pathway Land for uh, this color combination. So the Pathway Lands are the example here where when it comes into play you get the choice of it either being a swamp or an island, sorry, a black source or an island. Of note, they're not swamps, they're not islands, they don't have the basic land types. Um, so the pathway lands won't allow your temples to come or your castles to come into play untapped. And then finally, we're playing six of each basics uh, just to round out the mana base. So that's pretty much it. That's the deck at hand. Um, so it's kind of a synergistic life gain counters style deck with the clerics. As I mentioned on the onset, if you do have any suggestions for this deck, anything I missed, or decks in, quite, uh, in particular that you'd like to see, do let me know. I'll try to get to as many of these video deck texts as possible, but if you want to see all the decks I'm putting together, they'll be up on my Aether Hub uh, page. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you on Wednesday. I'll be streaming from about 1 p.m. Eastern to probably about 9, 10 p.m. Eastern uh, with some breaks in between. I will be testing out a bunch of cool decks, so hopefully catch you there. If not, everything's on my YouTube channel, so if you want to catch anything afterwards, do make sure to hit that subscribe button. It is free and an easy way to help support the channel and make sure that way that if I do post something, you can catch it later. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. Hope you stay safe out there and have a great one.